What is the best landing spot for each of the top free agent wide receivers? We're playing matchmaker today on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast. You are locked on NFL scouting with the Draft Dude, your daily podcast for NFL and college football scouting. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's better than this? It's guys being dudes here on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast. We're the Draft Dudes. I'm Joe Marino from Locked On Bills. He's Kyle Krabs from Locked On Dolphins. And we are your NFL experts here with you daily to talk team building across the league on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast with the Draft Dudes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Want to issue a big thank you, shout out, and welcome to our everydaysers. Those of you who make us your first listen every single day, we appreciate y'all being here very, very much. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 bucks. if your team wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. The everyday shirts. You know, we, we combine some words there, Kyle Krabs. <laughs> Sometimes it happens, brother. <laughs> well, I, I guess to be fair to you, we did a whole podcast before we our recording the podcast today. We talked about like eight different things, but yeah. we looked up. It's been 35 minutes since we got yeah. on the call, and like it's all football talk other than my daughter's temper tantrum yesterday. Yeah. Uh, I guess we, we better get going here and do the actual show. Yeah. So here we are. Happy Monday. Happy President's Day. Thank you. And we, today on the show, we did wide receiver big picture conversation yesterday or Friday. Objective being, hey, what's this market look like? Who are the intriguing names? So maybe off the radar names that maybe are, are uh, some high upside plays. Who do you stay away from? We didn't quite know how we wanted to go about getting into kind of the minutia of the conversation. And we decided we're going to just stick with the matchmaker. We had a lot of fun doing that with the running backs, which we did on Thursday day last week all the days bleed together mm-hmm. um so there's six wide receivers identified mike evans t higgins michael Pittman jr calvin ridley hollywood brown and tyler boyd i think we kind of feel like those are the bigger name intriguing wide receivers set to hit the market we're gonna fit them with teams here today on the show don't want to Rank the presidents today, Kyle. It's President's Day. We can go through and talk about our our favorite presidents. Stack them up. You know what? I'm not gonna ever do <laughs> create Bad. political content. Um, right? It's horrible, <laughs> horrible idea. Yeah. The other holiday coming up, I believe tomorrow is the start of the franchise tag window. Ah, yes. Um, and there's some fun dynamics there, right? With a uh, couple of players, it's not just a tag, right? There's some escalators. So, mm-hmm. uh, because Chris Jones is one of them, if I'm not mistaken, Mike Evans, another where it's like, if they get tagged, it's not the tag, it's the tag on steroids. Right. I think the Chris Jones one's a difference of almost, almost $10 million. I think Huge. between what the, the yeah. standard interior defensive lineman tag versus what the terms of his previous contract dictated it would be. So tags need and extend Chris Jones and move on in your lives. Probably. All right. All right. Let's do it. Let's get into Mike Evans, the most statistically accomplished wide receiver on this list. Mm. Um, the first player in my career as a scout that I ever made mad. Ooh, you remember that story? I do. And I, but what was fun is I just allowed my brain to consider other players that you made mad. Yeah. Uh, Kyle, I made a player uh, mad, uh, real mad, real mad. And guess what? He did yesterday. He auditioned for uh, American Idol. So uh, interesting to see how that uh, how that went down. So anyway, Mike Evans. <laughs> uh, his entire career to this point has been with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Mm-hmm. Thousand yards every season he's been in the league. Yep. Uh, highly productive player, but kind of a late stage player where... I think it does kind of create the the conflict for Tampa Bay and their decisions on what to do as a team that is trying to maintain their winning window. They did well winning the division last year. They won a playoff game. Uh, so they're kind of in a unique spot, Tampa Bay. So I, I guess I would ask you, Tampa Bay or the field for the fit for Mike Evans? Mm, I, have, I have not Tampa Bay. Um, I, I have Mike Evans kind of kind of chasing one here. Okay, so uh, AFC, NFC, NFC, NFC. 
East, North, or South, West? East, North. East, North. He's in the NFC North. Did you? Are we on the same page here? Yeah, the North. Because we did. Yeah, I'm. We're parallel so far. And to be totally clear, we did eight conversation points before the show. None of them were talking about who we had. We did this independently. We decided on it this morning. So we did. Or we did not compare notes. Detroit Lions. Yeah. One for one. <laughs> I didn't expect this to be aligned on this one. Well, it, it's you're looking at who has growth opportunity with their perimeter wide receivers who has an offensive structure that maybe needs a last piece who has salary cap space to spend and justify for Mike Evans. Those bullet points all check Mike Evans. So Detroit um, would really love him as a complimentary vertical component with Amon Ross St. Brown and what he does in the middle of the field, obviously Sam Laporte in the middle of the field. You've got a speedster in Jamison Williams. Yeah. You put Evans on the other side of that. Yikes. You put in what Josh Reynolds was reps were this yeah. year. You put Mike yeah. Evans in that spot. Play action oh. heavy D offense, brother. Let's go. Running, running digs and goes. Digs, Let's goes, go. and posts. Right. I love it. Yeah. It was a, uh, um, I guess based on the way that we both perceived it, you kind of just went through a good outline there of, of the things that I factored into my decision here. And it's like, well, Maybe I shouldn't be surprised that we landed to the same place because it is kind of a marriage of all of that. It's good logic. I, th I think if you, you approach the entire league, knowing what Mike has shined with, knowing what the bones of Detroit's bread and butter plays are, they're a super physical team. Mike's a super physical wide receiver. A chance for a team to, oh, Dan Campbell told his team, you might not get back here. It's going to be really hard. But they've got the infrastructure from what they've done the last few years, and they're trying to get over the top. Yeah. It makes a ton of sense. Would love to see it. Which brings us to T. Higgins. We've kind of teased the T. Higgins conversation. Yeah. Or at least we did yesterday or on Friday's show. One of these days I'm going to remember that it's Monday. We talked about the long-term outlook of Cincinnati with the Joe Burrow contract, the pending Jamar Chase contract extension, and, and how you foil that with, with T. Higgins and him probably. What do you think T. Higgins' APY will be when he gets his next? 25 plus. With his next long-term contract. Yeah, north of 25. And I emphasize long-term contract because I think this is a very good, given Cincinnati being top five in salary cap space, I think this is a very good franchise tag candidate. I agree. I have the Bengals. Okay, I have the Bengals, but I also had a parenthesis like, okay, if we're if we allow ourselves to consider a world where he's not back on the Bengals, what team is the one? Okay. And I landed on the Giants. I think the Giants are the team that is most desperate to find a legitimate number one wide receiver that they can funnel some volume through. And so because of that opportunity for T because of the need for the giants. I know that they're not brimming in cap space. They've got around 20 million and certainly there's things they can do to create more. I felt like that was a great landing spot amongst several great landing spots. If you allow your mind to wander outside of the Bengals for T Higgins. Okay. So I had not allowed my mind to wander outside of the Bengals Cause I said, I'm going to slap more of the franchise tag move on with my life here. Cause we got mm -hmm. four other names to, to figure out that said, just kind of looking at the league. If I had to pick a not franchise tag destination that's not the Bengals, I think I like Carolina the most. The about Canales and what he did in Tampa Bay with another big body down the field wide receiver in Mike Evans. You think about their need for a number one wide receiver to build out around Bryce Young, get their number one overall pick some weapons. They've got made a lot of investments in the offensive line for better or for worse. So I think there, there's um, not necessarily a pressing need to feel pressure to roll a bunch of money into your offensive line. You need skill players around it. I think I would like Carolina if I went off of the Cincinnati franchise tag route. I don't hate that at all. T Higgins uh, native of East Tennessee, right? Played his college ball at Clemson yeah. Yeah. right up the road. Yeah. Well, that would not be a bad idea for the Carolina Panthers. There you go. All right, Michael Pittman Jr. 
Calvin Ridley coming up here in just a moment, so be sure to stick with us. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because right now new customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. So you can bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive props, and more. They've also got plenty of football's futures bets, hockey, whatever sports you're into. FanDuel has some fun action that you can check out and make those sports even more entertaining. So check it out. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA. Michael Pittman Jr. I think maybe the most fascinating blend of skills, production, added upside maybe we haven't seen yet. I think this is the name for me. I think this is the most intriguing name on the market. I I would agree with you that it's the most intriguing name on the market, but it's also the one that I find the least likely to not be back on the team that they were previously on. Like we get, like Mike Evans, you can kind of see like maybe he's not vibing with the direction of the Bucks. He wants to go win late stage in his career. T. Higgins, we've talked about. Well, can Cincinnati really have a hundred plus million dollars invested in a quarterback and two wide receivers? Like you can see it. The, the the Colts as a team that just picked Anthony Richardson in the top five that has, I mean, they always have cap space. I don't have it right in front of me. I'm sure they have plenty of it's cap 59 space. $59 million in cap space. Yeah, they have the, the, the funds to do it. You drafted this player. You've developed them. The GM that drafted him still there. Like, to me, him going back to Indy, just, I would just be very surprised if that didn't happen. I'm inclined to agree with you, and I think there's less roadblocks uh, than what T has in Cincinnati for a long-term contract extension to get figured out. That said, do you have a team if you win? I also have Indianapolis. Yeah. But, and I don't have the franchise tag. If you went away from the original team, is there a team that jumps to you for a team that makes a lot of sense. I think there's there's a ton of teams that make sense, but I know that's you want one. Um, I might say the Arizona Cardinals, $42 million in cap space. Even if they brought back Hollywood Brown, I think they need a guy to play opposite of him. That would be a nice complimentary skill set. So um, I could certainly mention other teams, the Bears, the Patriots, the Titans, a lot of teams that would make sense. But mm-hmm. I think the Cardinals as a team that has like a, paid quarterback that needs more on that roster i think they would make a lot of sense to me i think i would like the patriots not i wouldn't like the patriots but i think the patriots would make a lot of sense yeah because they just they got to rehaul rehaul that whole room he still kind of fits into that big body type that they had they had a lot of big bodies that weren't necessarily separators but he brings a different element of separation but he still has the physicality, and if they still want to be a hard-nosed, blue-collar team, okay, you, you can get away with that. So I think that that would make a lot of sense for, for Pittman. How about Calvin Ridley as our next team on this list? Do you see the reality here? Cause I've, I think I've mentioned it 400 times this offseason yeah. Yeah, that yeah. the Jaguars would give up the second-round pick. So now we know what those are. It's, it's pick 79 versus – is it 78 40. versus 49 or 48? 49. Yeah, it's yeah, a so top it's, 50 pick. Yeah, so from like a almost pick 80 to a top 50 pick. So that's that's such a huge thing to consider in whether or not you're going to bring back Calvin Ridley, who had a 1,000 yards for you, but is also 30 years old. He's 30 year, years old while you also simultaneously still have a tight end who just became a very popular high-volume target in your passing offense. And you're paying Christian Kirk. Big time money. So it's and top they still 50. have Zay Jones. I mean, yeah, I don't they do. Yeah. They do. So not for a top 50 pick. Not for a top 50 pick. So I we, think that we're kind of both expecting Calvin Ridley to be available. Yes. Yeah. I do. So AFC or NFC? AFC. You're on the AFC side of things. Okay. So am I. Are you in the east, north, or the south, west? East, north. Okay. 
I'm not. All right. Okay. Uh, so who who do you have? Since there's no more drama, I don't need to milk it out. Anymore. Yeah, yeah. So I have down the New England Patriots, and the reason I do is for a lot of what you discussed just a moment ago with with Michael Pittman, and they kind of have this type, right? These big bodied possession style receivers, uh, Juju Smith-Schuster, Devontae Parker, those guys are still back. I know that they've got some other uh, younger players that have flashed and have some speed, but I feel like they need a, a route runner, right? Like just an, a route winner, a guy that can be a little bit more of a do-everything guy as opposed to what they get from Juju and what they get from Devontae Parker. And so I thought Calvin Ridley was a veteran uh, that takes them away from their need to rely on finding young players, but also gives them a skill set that is more complete than anything that they have right now in their receiving core. Yeah. I have the Kansas City Chiefs down. Nope. Don't want that. <laughs> so Kansas City right now is sitting about $15 million in cap space. You restructure Pat Mahomes, you go to 50. Right. You move on from Marquez Valdez Scantling, you save another 12. Okay. Don't tell Brent, Brent Beach the, these things. Don't let the, him know. The world is their oyster. Okay. And I know you, you drafted Sky Moore on day two. And you made the move around to get Kadarius Tony. I think that ship has sailed. We're all comfortable saying that. Uh, you, you got the hit, it looks like, in Rasheed Rice. But this, this was the year as the year went on. You kind of saw the lack of trust and chemistry with the wide receivers that were there. Maybe the growth hasn't come. You have the ability with, with where you are at to add a player and add a meaningful player. And I don't think you have to pay Calvin Ridley $25 million to sign, right? Is Calvin Ridley's probably, what, a high teens receiver? Yeah. How easy is that to accommodate? Shouldn't be hard. Shouldn't be hard. So I have the Chiefs down as the fit for all the different ways in which he wins, how good of a route runner he is, developing chemistry with Patrick Mahomes in a way that the young guys that, aren't good route runners or struggle to catch the ball have not makes a lot of sense. Kyle Krabs makes Sorry. a lot of sense. They're going to get a receiver, aren't they? They're going to do it probably. Uh, yeah. It's going to have to come to come to grips with this. Okay. All right. We're going to get to Hollywood Brown, Tyler Boyd. I've got a few bonus players as well that we're going to get to here in just a moment. So be sure to stick with us. Folks, you shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event. We well, don't have to because game time is here for you. And it's the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. They've got killer deals on last-minute tickets, all-in prices. They give you a view from your seat and a best price guarantee. I mean, game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. The app is awesome. They give you some flash deals. They give you this really cool feature where if you buy a ticket, it goes straight to your phone. And you don't have to dig through all the emails to find it. It's very, very convenient. I mean... I feel like they've done such a good job of just simplifying the ticket purchasing process so you can snag the tickets without the stress with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use code locked on for $20 off of your first purchase. Terms apply again, create an account and redeem code locked on. That's L O C K E D O N for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Our next wide receiver spotlight goes to Hollywood Brown, the former Baltimore Raven traded for a first round pick to the Arizona Cardinals. Things haven't exactly gone smoothly since that happened. He's now an unrestricted free agent. Big time speedster, take the roof off the defense. Think about that skill set when you're projecting potential team fits. You have a spot you like? I I did not have a great time finding a spot I was head over heels for for Hollywood Brown. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I'm not head over heels with it, but I have a spot that I thought made some sense. Okay. So are you in the AFC or the NFC? NFC. I'm also in the NFC. I'm going to be real mad if we get this one on, if we're on the same page here, because I thought I, I did a good job finding my way here. And if you did it too, then that'll be disappointing. I'm not as creative as I thought it was. The east or north or the south and west? Southwest. I am also in the south and west. Are you in the NFC South? Yep. Are you the Atlanta Falcons? I am not. <laughs> okay. Okay. Who you got? I got I the got Falcons. The, I have the Panthers. Okay. Talking about the Panthers. 
Well, we know what Hollywood Brown does is he helps your offensive spacing. He's a guy that can stress defenses vertically, which can kind of open some things up for the underneath players. And I think that Carolina has underneath players. Their vertical threat, DJ Chark, I kind of expect him to move on. And I think they need to replace that skill set. And I think they get it uh, probably a more, not probably, definitely a more explosive vertical receiver than DJ Chark and Hollywood Brown. And I think that's, I mean, part of what they need for, for Bryce Young is to improve the spacing, right? <laughs> like uh, they, they are going to rely on him to play point guard a little bit with some of their underneath stuff. Uh, but that's made possible when you have some player that can respect that defenses have to respect vertically. And, and Bryce has been a good down the field thrower. Uh, at least, you know, at, at Alabama, we saw that. So I think this is just a skill set that would be beneficial to Bryce Young and that Panthers offense. And um, obviously he can bring that to any team. There's a lot of teams that could use that, but I, I feel like Panthers kind of felt like a desperate spot for him. I'm going to read the following names to you. Van Jefferson, Scotty Miller, Kadero Hodge, Mac Collins. What do all of those names have in common? I'm pretty sure they're all expiring contracts. They're expiring contracts at wide receiver for the Atlanta Falcons. Yeah. The wide receivers under contract in Atlanta are Drake London, a first round pick, and Josh Ali. That's it. That's the dudes we got under contract. Okay. And we've kind of heard Atlanta, one way or another, is maybe going to find themselves in the quarterback market to go out and find a new quarterback, be it trading for Justin Fields if Chicago moves off with picking one at number one or Russell Wilson potentially, if Denver manages to move on. I heard him and Ciara were accepting offers for their mansion that they bought for $25 million in Denver or the greater Denver area. So it appears we're going that way. You certainly can't just run it back with Desmond Ritter and Taylor Heineke, right? So they're going to do something. You have Bijan Robinson, Kyle Pitts, Drake London. I get it. But the offensive line is completely locked in. They've got a good unit up front. They spent last year on defense, and they, they largely, I think, found some, some good hits. Obviously, Jesse Bates was a, a massive win for them. And then you look at Raheem Morris as the new coach with Zach Robinson as the offensive coordinator, who just had a big glow up last year in L.A. with the Rams, with Zach Robinson. Obviously, not as a big time part of the coaching staff there, but did we finally see some life out of Tutu Atwell? Did we finally get something going for a second round pick in Tutu Atwell? Mm -hmm. And I think Hollywood Brown has that same speed element. He's similar body type. I think Zach Robinson would love to have a player with some parallel skills to Tutu Atwell. So all of those things combined, put Hollywood Brown on the Falcons for me and whoever's playing quarterback this year. I think you had a very good, logical reasoning pathway for that well done let's do it let's do it which takes us to tyler boyd our last mutual name that we have here on this list um tyler boyd is the about a decade now right it's been a while plus veteran with the Bengals. spent his whole career thus far with the Bengals. we're talking about them justifying paying chase burrow and t you're certainly not going to justify paying Chase for OT and Tyler Boyd. So he's probably yeah. on the outs in Cincinnati. Obviously, they had a couple of young guys that that flashed a little bit for him between Charlie Jones and Yusevich as well. You got a spot you like for Tyler? I do. Uh, he's but Here's the thing about Tyler Boyd. He's, he's 29 and he turns 30 in November. So it's not like he's cooked. He's, um, he's, he feels like he's been around for He was ever. young when he came out. 29. Yeah. Well, his uh, true freshman season at Pitt was 2013, and he had like a thousand yards and beat some of Larry Fitzgerald's records. So, like, he became a thing very quickly, and then didn't run as fast as everybody wanted to at the, at the combine, and people fell off. But I had that first run grade on Tyler Boyd, uh, so I feel good about <laughs> do you that. Feel, do you feel justified? He's got. I do. Um, he's had a nice career. It's kind of been a complimentary option. He's had a very good career, man. 753 or 500 receptions, 6,000 yards in eight years. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, it's, seven. Yeah, this will be year nine. Yeah. I did a nice job. Okay. My spot for him, 
do you, I have a spot? Yes, I do. I don't know if you want to do the thing here. No, I don't, I don't want to do the thing. I just want to uh, I have the Titans. Ooh. Yeah. So Brian okay, Callahan, so Brian Callahan coming over from Cincy, obviously the offensive okay. coordinator there for a number of years. Uh, so I think that, I think that really Tyler Boyd can be a benefit to Brian Callahan. Um, I think it's helpful to have guys that know you that can help connect your messaging to the locker room and uh, help, right? I think that'd be a major asset to the entire offense, especially a young quarterback like Will Levis. We know Boyd's a route runner. That's going to be where he's supposed to be. You heard Brian Callahan in his opening press conference with the Titans talk about yeah, what his offense is going to be. And he talked about a lot about route timing and and spacing and route depth, right? Like it's going to be a true West Coast offense. And I think that Tyler Boyd can give them a route winner. I like what Hopkins can give them down the field. Traylon Burks is a complete wild card to me in terms of what to expect there. I think this could be a stabilizing player for that offense, for Brian Callahan, and for Will Levis. I like that a lot. I had the Bears down. I didn't love it. And the reason I had the Bears down is we're expecting them to go with a quarterback. They obviously have DJ Moore. You then have an expiring contract in Darnell Mooney. Mm -hmm. You've got Cole Komet. I kind of felt like there was room for another like reliable pass catcher for a yeah. young quarterback to make sure you have. And, and they were the team that $67 million in cap space right now, you know, they, they can sign anybody they want, but if you want to be judicious, like if you get to pick nine and you want to draft a wide receiver, like you can still do that if you sign Tyler Boyd versus if you were to sign one of these other guys. So I didn't love the fit. I kind of like the the Titans one more with all the parallels that you draw with, with coach Callahan coming in there. And obviously they have a big need at wide receiver as well. And they have for two years and is John your Hopkins staying? Is he going? I, I feel like there's been zero conversation about that. He signed a multi-year deal. He's like mm -hmm. under contract. And like, I thought he was very helpful for Will Levis. If I'm Tennessee and, and they're, they're in good and a good cap position, they have $67 million in cap space, number one in the NFL. Like I don't feel the urgency to create a bunch of space. I'd like for Will Levis to be able to continue with Hopkins. And I, so I, if I'm a Titans fan, I'd be hopeful that that was a yes, that he's back. So he's to a almost four and a half million dollar roster bonus on March 18th, which I think that Friday of the week, the league year opens. I believe that's the, what that day is. Um, or is that a Monday? It might be a Monday. I don't know. I know I fly home from Indianapolis on the second and that's a Saturday. So plus 14, which is two weeks would be the 16th. Draft dudes do math. The 18th is a Monday. I got it. I, I, I know it. It's Monday. I don't have to look. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I hope you're right. The way the contract was structured, they put three void years on the back end of that two-year deal for Hopkins. So you could move on and save about $10 million in cap space, but I generally agree with you, and I almost might want to see if I could get Nuke on a little bit of an extension. And not just town. Cool. Okay. Okay. I mean, you have the cap space to do it. Are you going to justify the the way that last season went and potentially the way that this season goes with a totally overhauled operation? I I'd feel a little bit better and sleep a little better about it if I got more than two years out of DeAndre Hopkins late stage career, Don DeAndre Hopkins, and I paid him the money that they paid him to come come in and that you got nothing competitively. I think right. he's a guy who can still age relatively gracefully. I know we did that show last off season, right? Yeah. We did like the deep dive watching the film on DeAndre and we're like, look, maybe he's lost a step, but he's still from a football IQ perspective and route running ability. He can still really go so, hands, hands, hands. Uh, who else do you have? I know you have a couple bonus names on your list. Three bonus names. Um, Gabe Davis, you and I uh, had a collaborative conversation on him on Sunday, I'm pretty sure. And yes. Arizona Cardinals, I think, would be a good spot. Kyler Murray throws a good deep ball. He's also an off-script player, and I think Gabe Davis kind of does his best work when he gets to just attack space. And I think that would be helpful for Kyler Murray, who needs probably a couple of pass catchers. Mm -hmm. I've got Curtis Samuel to the Bears. 
Um, you talked about the need that they have mm-hmm. for a, a playmaker there. I think is a multifaceted weapon. Uh, you'd be a nice fit for whatever direction they go at wide receiver under Shane Waldron. And then Darnell Mooney, come to me. Come to me to the Buffalo Bills, Darnell. I loved you at Tulane. It's time for us to reunite in Western New York. Uh, I had a wide receiver down for the Buffalo Bills, but it was not oh. any of the names that you mentioned. Let's, let's see here. Who did Kyle Krabs have down it's, for the Odell no, Beckham the, Jr.? I know it's not nefarious. <laughs> it's it's not the uh, it's not Keon Coleman. Oh <laughs> man, if we can just get Keon Coleman, maybe you Odell Beckham. Analytic- Another another yeah, you better believe I saw Keon it. Coleman and yeah. big surprise in the bottom five of the right. list. Right. Uh it's DJ Chark. All right, all right. We could take it. Uh, you know, it's it's kind of the not the same body type as Gabe Davis, but like a similar vertical skill set for probably what's gonna be half the price. His last uh Chark's last contract was five million dollars yeah. per season average probably, for probably gonna be about half the deal yeah right and so it's like okay yeah i can get a similar skill set as a hedge protect myself for if we struck out in the draft at wide receiver and spend half the amount of money that it would be for gabe davis i'll dig it cool it's gonna do it for us here locked on nfl scouting Kyle Krabs, Joe Marino. we appreciate you guys for checking out the show you can find us on youtube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast make it a great rest of your day and we will be back again tomorrow with more free agency talk coming your way